traditions. For instance, what we were talking about just recently about the statue that was uh, uh, located in, in, within the city. Uh, uh, values and also beliefs within people. Uh, most of these things also, they have a certain contribution towards the development of economy when you talk of domestic policies. But in, in a nutshell, I believe uh, when we look at the economic sections within Zimbabwe, they, they contribute to 15%, I would say 15, on my own personal perspective, 15% uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic sabotage. Uh, the rest of 85%, which is not being exploited by the current government. And uh, this is, of course, the technological developments that we have mentioned, the capital formation, which is also the infrastructural development, machinery, power, transportation, and also medium of communication, modern technology, which is also crit critical. Human resources, the quality and quantity of, of also uh, labor, which can also have a direct uh, effect on, on the economic growth. Skills are important and also creative abilities. People who are naturally talented, all these people have uh, an effect. So now, <clears throat> When we look at uh, 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 the social and political factors, which is one of the main factors that affect economic development uh, in Zimbabwe, we have a lot of things that are dotted uh, that if not conjoined, will, not, will affect all these other four. And that is confidence within a system. Because when we talk of uh, economics, we cannot separate economics from politics. This is why we, we even have political economics, because it plays a major role in economic development politics. So you find that one of the major issues is confidence, because we need a situation where the government and the people work together in, in uh, policy implementation, uh, um, uh, policy implementation, uh, job creation, of course, uh, participation in the formation of all, uh, various policies uh, in major uh, is also a major effect on, on on economic growth. So now, when we look at what we have, the current situation we have in Zimbabwe, we have a situation where. The people, us as, as 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 the citizens, we lack confidence within our own system. Why? Because we have a, a lot of people who are individualistic uh, in a, in, uh, in 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 political power in in political positions. Uh, we have uh, people who who do not serve people, and we have leaders that do not serve people people's interests, people who, uh, leaders who are, who are very uh, uh, selfish, to say, uh, people, uh, leaders who do not consider what the people need, people, leaders who do not listen to what the people need. Uh, so these are some of the few, just to mention, um, uh, of uh, these are some of the few things that uh, you find are affecting uh, our country. Uh, in Zimbabwe, three of the major factors that are economic pillars, we have mining sector, we have the agricultural sector, and we also have uh, uh, tertiary uh, systems. Uh, so, sorry to say, uh, Mr. Andrew, uh, can you try just to be a bit short? We have uh, okay. about three guys waiting also, and we are running out of time. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. All right. Fine. Let me let me let me try and just summarize. So, so when we talk of these things, uh, if we are to look at the uh, economic growth or the the the, the uh, GNP uh, of Zimbabwe in 1980, majority of it was contributed by agriculture. In this agriculture, we had pivot. We had people who played pivotal roles, who owned farms, people who produced 
But these are some of the fewest people we took away land from. The fewest people and we gave it to people without protection. Fine, we have people who had the same capabilities, but we did not look at that. We also looked at, we, we concentrated our, our, our dis land distribution to people who were influential, people who had power, and we ended up giving our land to the wrong people. Secondly, when we look at mining, the mining sector, we had over 150 uh, mines that closed down last year. Some of the things, these are, uh, which uh, it was a political hindrance, uh, which was an uh, uh, economic hindrance. And also we have uh, mines like Mashaba mine, we have uh, um, the one for Kwekwe, Cisco Steel. Things that only need uh, 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 um, uh, capital to be reboosted. Things that can regenerate. But we are failing to have our government look into them. Why? Because they have misplaced priorities. For instance, right now we're talking of a statue that was uh, built in, within the city. But we elect uh, 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 cancer machines in the, in 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 medical uh, in our hospitals, which is something that is crucial to the to the people. We have uh, chiefs who are being uh, given vehicles, but we we we, we don't have uh, uh, adequate ambulances for the people. We have sudden um, okay. Let, let me let me stop here for now, and and may, probably I'll take it up after after. The next person. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Andrew. Uh, we can uh, have uh, Elvis. Okay, Elvis, and then after Elvis, uh, RG, and then Katnao Wasu uh, will close up uh, okay. because of time. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, okay, I think today we've been discussing about whether or not Zimbabwe we can move past the economic sanctions. <laughs> I think to be frank, to answer this question, I think I can say Zimbabwe can move past economic sanctions, but unfortunately, Zimbabwe refuses to move past these economic sanctions. And we refuse to move past these economic sanctions in that, in many different ways. For example, uh, we keep crying about the West and trying to re-engage. When our current president was put into power, the first thing he said was Zimbabwe was open for business. And the first thing he tried to do was to go outside the country and re-engage with foreign countries, right? And these same countries are the same countries that have imposed sanctions against Zimbabwe. Whereas if we want to move past sanctions, we should be looking inwards. For example, we should have been creating policies that help us move past sanctions. Uh, but if you look at the policies that have been created, I mean, let's look right down from the bottom, for example. I heard people talking about the issue of buses the transport sector in Zimbabwe. We had a reliable transport sector with the combis or Chova or whatever you want to call it. And that was reliable. You could get people moving from point A to point B, from work to home to wherever. And the government removed all of that and created the Zubko Saga, which now has not enough buses. We cannot transport people to and from work, even in, if we had a working economy right now and people needed to go to work and to school, we wouldn't be able to get that large workforce from home to school to work and get kids from school to home during our rush hour. And these are the policies that we're talking about. We are making policies, regressive policies. Let's look at, for example, the governor Gideon Gono in the past, then the minister, you have different people, different faces, but they are all making the same mistakes and expecting different results. Let's say, for example, the bond notes, right, which now is the RTGS or whatever they call it. 
it's the same people make, trying the same things that have been proved not to work, but then we are still going on and using those and hoping that they're going to make change, that they're going to make changes and that this time they're going to work. But clearly it's not working, but why do we keep going back? Let's look at the agriculture. Zimbabwe was one of the biggest producers of agriculture. We used to produce for most of the world. Right now, we've, although we have sanctions, you can still find a lot of produce from Zimbabwe in different countries around the world, including the US itself, be it the US, be it France, be it the UK. We can still sell our produce to all these countries. We can still sell our produce to China despite economic sanctions, but we are not producing enough. And yes, sometimes we can say it's the drought, but is it the drought? Is it the drought that encourages everyone to be using Fumfuza when we should be encouraging people to mechanize their farming? We should be encouraging people to go forward. We should be encouraging people to have greenhouses. We should be encouraging people to have drip irrigation. Like instead of going forward, we keep regressing. And let's look at technological advancements. It's the same thing. Instead of going forward in terms of agriculture, in terms of mining, most of our industry is closed. We can no longer create anything. We used to produce a lot of buses. During the Smith era, they were under sanctions. They used to produce buses, which they used to sell around Africa. And even now, all these industries, Willow Vale, Mazda, they have all closed. We should be producing our own things, but instead we're importing. And if our import bill is always higher than our export bill, then how are we going to move past the sanction? We have the capability of doing all of these things, but like I said, we refuse to move back to sanctions. We prefer to have to hide behind that straw of, oh, we have sanctions, so we can't do this. We have sanctions, but we, so we can't do this, right? So are we willing to make the changes? Are we willing? To move past these, to move past it, or do we keep using it as an excuse for bad governments? Do we keep using it as an excuse for corruption? Do we keep using it as an excuse for poor healthcare? Do we keep using it as an excuse for poor policies? I mean, even in terms of education, if we are to move past sanctions, for example, by now we have to get to a point where we need to rethink our whole curriculum, our whole education system. Our education system currently produces more workers than it does movers and shakers. We don't have enough room for people to become thinkers, for people to become creatives, for people to have an engineering degree. And instead of working in a company or working in Zesa where they're just going and fixing electricity, we do have mines. We have Zimbabweans who are making electric cars. We have Zimbabweans who are making TVs that, you, that use radio waves to work. And all these people are people that the government should be taking and saying, hey, this is a person who we can fund and we can create a company out of this and we can grow industry in Zimbabwe, but we don't have all of that. And this is why I say in conclusion, in Zimbabwe, we do have the capacity to move past the suction that we refuse to do it because it's a convenient excuse. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Elvis. Like I said, uh, we are running out of time. Um, RG tried to be very short and precise, and then Cardinal also uh, can give us the closing remarks. Okay, can I just comment before? I so oh, sorry, Mona. Sorry, my bad. My bad, Mona. You can go ahead. Sorry. Uh, RG, you can go ahead, then I can comment before. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mona. Uh, I wanted to to agree with Elvis. Uh, if we look past back, uh, we have two events, Patunona, uh, one of, of, of the people in government, uh, Mr. Muchangwa saying, if a, if, if a leader complains about sanctions, that leader has failed. Uh, and then he goes on to say, on, on, on a Twitter space, he goes on to say, uh, whoever complains about sanctions or try to 
give him a sanction as a reason of the failures that we are facing in Zimbabwe. Just tell him that's village politics. That that's what he he, he called it. So I I don't think there is anything that can stop us to achieve a stable economy. Is what Elvis has been saying. And let me tell you, if you go Kunoverenga up um site here in United States uh, Embassy in Zimbabwe, you shall then find out that Zimbabwe is doing trade with the US. <laughs> the US is doing trade with Zimbabwe. Actually, I love this guy anons him uh so but he's an advocate for, for sanctions. I know Garak South Africa, this this guy, sorry, I forgot the name. And, and this guy, I, I I like him because he's actually exporting um my blueberries to the west i know think it's like but ukamunzi ba shitara ma sanctions it sounds as if it's impossible to do business outside zimbabwe so my question is ndiani patiri panapa panapa asiri pa targeted list re ma sanctions ari kutadza kuita business outside of zimbabwe ari kutadza kutengesa chichi not misa kuti economy edu isanake chichi ri kuti misa so we can do better as Zimbabweans. We can do better as Zimbabwe. We can have a stable economy, regardless of these targeted sanctions. And I also want to comment on, on the issue of my recommendations. If you are going to interrogate and investigate these, these uh, recommendations, Mr. Speaker, you shall then find out that 99.9% it benefits the ordinary Zimbabwean. It doesn't benefit the, the United States of America. It doesn't benefit the UK government. Yes, we can maybe disagree on the issue of land. But you know, we can't compensate or we can't give back the land to the white. But actually, the government has gone back to pay the whites. I don't know if the ordinary Zimbabweans has agreed to that. But 99% of the Zaganyo Waipabu, it clearly states it's been removed 2013 constitution, if I'm not mistaken. Just respect the human rights. Just respect my property rights. This is, this is really simple and straightforward. If we look at the 2018 shootings, Tinema recommendations are most um, findings, if I'm not mistaken. The government has done nothing, nothing. It, that doesn't have anything to do with my sanctions. If we look in the economy to 2009, if I'm not mistaken, 2009 to 2010, we had the lowest um, rate, in, the lowest inflation rate here, about three to eight percent, if I'm not mistaken. Where were sanctions during that time? Inflation by I don't know, sky purple. But in Tuli comes, we are over, I don't know, maybe over 300, over minus three, uh, over 300 percent, maybe. I don't know. Where were sanctions by it, guys? Was, where were sanctions? Chingo, but you can up a dollar for 290 cents. But you know, 2022, Chingo, you can two dollars. Where were sanctions? So we can't continue crying about sanctions. We can't continue giving sanctions as an excuse for us to achieve a stable economy in Zimbabwe. No. In la, in as I close my submissions, I, I think whosoever is going to give an excuse for your issue of sanctions, I think I think that's village politics. We should not dwell on that. Thank you. The discussions are very, very, very. <laughs> I am saying, let us recognize the niche of the problem. Mujishona andro tengati tari se panedampu zikoro Zimbabwe jero jero. Let us not be political. Let us let us not try to defend ourselves. The niche of the problem. Misgovernment, policy inconsistency, Yawra Zimbabwe. Yes, sanctions are there. But we, we do have a lot of countries that have, you know, Russia is under sanctions, Cuba is under sanctions, Iran is under sanctions. But they are doing better than Zimbabwe. Why is Zimbabwe? Forty years. It's been for. Why? Why? Why is it we are not we are not doing well? There is something that we are missing. You know, as a country. So we are supposed to address that as a country. I think let us be patriotic to the nation. I think if we be if. If we as a country will become patriotic to the nation and not to the politicians, then we can go a step further. You know? 
I do I do, and and school is wrong gonna more Let us be patriotic to the nation and not politicians. These politicians come and go. But the nations the nation is Zimbabwe will always be there. So let us be patriotic to the Zimbabwe nation and not politicians. Well, some of these policies are wounds. When oh, no, let's look east. Uh, what what do we benefit? We benefit nothing. Let's do this. We benefit nothing. Uh, let's be patriotic to a nation. If a politician has failed, is if a politician is involved in corruption, nepotism, if a, they are supposed to go. They're supposed to go. See, it's, it's as simple as that. Everyone who is supposed who is involved in corruption, who is involved in corruption. Everyone who is we, we cannot account for the money that we can we have given to him. They're supposed to go. As Naba Saudi Aka Vakupi can Arwenda Wupi. Guy and because we are loyal to Zimbabwe. We are Zimbabweans. We are loyal to Zimbabwe. We are not loyal to a name. That's why I remezita. Ragato mbo vipa apu rangari nge mangu maku ori ya kawandisa. Ragato vipa apu rangari nge. Atina loyal to kuzitari munu. Atina loyal to kuzimbabwe. Zimbabwe. 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 Munu kana hati nga gouni kuchengete za zitari Zimbabwe. Munu kana hati nga gouni kuisa wa mpapasa. Rekutipa chengete za zitari Zimbabwe. Haa munu yega. Haa kwa nisi kuta hati nga miri Zimbabwe. I don't know what it is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being political. I'm not being partisan. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Kajita ure isu ni sezwa. Tambu zikura katanga. Iri tambu zikura katanga. Ameno kuma 1980s. Kuna na ISAP. These people were there. ISAP was, was implemented. ISAP was there. ISAP was there. Very clear. Clear instruction. It is so, so, so. Wanu wakaba mari. Pagatu kwa nepotism. Pagatu corruption. That was uh, kuma 90s. We are in 2020, 20, 2021. When Wangwari involved in ISAP, what she reports 20 years after. What are they doing? What do you want to do? You know, you know, I don't know. Manashe, to remind you, time, time, time. I'm sorry, but time. Okay, thank you very much. But I'm just saying, be loyal to Zimbabwe. Don't be loyal to people. Don't be loyal to names. Don't be loyal to individuals. Be loyal to the nation of Zimbabwe. We are supposed to move as Zimbabwe. Thank you very much. The peace. Uh